Hey guys, what's going on? It's not welcome back to Sokoban the RPG. Looks like we are in for more story and riddle stuff. Uh, Alright, anyway. I'm sorry, Lewis, I'm talking to my boss at present. Hey, boss. Good evening, Miss An Mr. Anderson. Why, hello. If it isn't Lewis, you haven't changed much since last time, have you? I don't think so. Change needs time, after all. That's enough, Lewis. You look beautiful as always. Your youthful grace never ceases to amaze me. Thanks, I guess? You tell me when you're ready, Garner. Oh, I see. Um, Lewis, why don't you go to the kitchen and pour the present guests a glass of wine, would you? That's fine, Dad. Whenever you're ready, do not hesitate to come back to come to talk to us. Okay. Just go on ahead, Lewis. I will remain here for a while. Applied mathematics. Alright, kitchen. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. Where's one of these doors? Let's take a few of these bottles and offer the glass. I can offer a glass to the guests. What just happened? Power cut. I'll take this. Did she just pick up a knife? Uh, really? I opt to stay inside. It's quite windy out. Not like sale, and she drinks it like very, very regularly. I can usually tell she's been drinking by the number of balls here, but I never actually caught her. All right, so let's head on out again. Okay, let's go and tend to the guests. We'll have some red wine. You poured the guest glass of red wine. Could I offer you some red wine? All right, just gotta go through everybody. That's four people. people doing here anyway don't quite understand are they having like a work party or something my mum's just like aimlessly wandering around the gardens clearly so all right just want to check uh, up to 12 glasses of wine to people just in case hey Lewis don't mind me I'm just looking for weeds in the grass you know how high class men are wouldn't you agree? I know it's all too well, Mom. I see you're carrying a few empty bottles there. Maybe I can clue that all the guests are satisfied with their beverages. I think so. Splendid. Then we can commence, if I'm not mistaken. Lewis, can you go ahead and change your... F and change? Your frilly school outfit isn't very fitting for a party like this. Okay. Please, just go. Seems a little forced to me. I beg your pardon? The way you barricaded yourself. Are you so afraid of me hitting you or something? If only you knew, Lewis. If only you knew. What's that supposed to mean? Let's stay on track here. I have a puzzle for me. Yeah, big shock. Come on. Now, let's try to be polite to each other. But you're indeed correct. I do have a puzzle for you and you alone. Before you entered, I had a full stock of, a full stock of cards. The usual 52, no jokers involved. I split the deck in two equal piles in such a way that one of the stacks contained four more black cards than the other. All right. It's right in time. If I don't knock things off my desk, that is. All right, so we have 52 cards. So we have two piles of 26 each. And one of the stacks contained four more black than the other. So that means there is 
13 would be halfway. That's so 17 black and nine red. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. It's not 17. It's 13 and 13 is half. So if it contains four more, it will only be 15. So it'll be 15 black and I'll be 11 red. The other deck will have 15 red and 11 black. Okay. I subsequently split one of the piles again into two equal stacks and put them and put them in the two stacks on the left side of the table. Let's call these stacks A and B. All right, but it doesn't say which one he didn't say which one he's put, did he? Okay, so on the left, we have A and B. We don't know whether or not that's the one with the more reds or blacks. I then continue to split the remaining pile into two equal stacks as well. I put these in two stacks on the right. Let's say C and D. Okay. I allow myself to take a peek inside the sacks. And I can tell you this much. Oh, sorry, but sacks, not stacks. Sack C contains two more red cards than sack B. All right, so C has two more reds than B. There are twice as many blacks in D. Twice as many black than A. Now, could you please tell me the amount of red cards in each stack? Sack. Here we go again. All right, so. C has two more reds than B, and D has twice as many blacks than A. So let's think, if that had... That would have to be six. Sorry, I'm just writing things down here. No, it doesn't really help the visual aspect from you guys. So that would leave five black in there. And that would leave three black in there. Okay, so the 15 reds were split amongst them. Oh, so the total, total card's got to be 13, hasn't it? 13, 13. So it can only be 13 in each sack. So that would mean one red in there. And that would be 10 in there. So then for that to be logical, there were two more reds than B. So that would mean there was eight reds in B, five blacks. And so then there would be what's the difference there? Seven, seven and eight is hold on, seven, eight. I'm going for fifteen, ten, fifteen. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, five. So that's not right. My that that theory is not right because I was thinking that thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. No, it is right. 
It's a seven red in there. Seven and six is thirteen. Okay. So I believe A has six black and seven red. B has five black and eight red. C has three black and ten red. And D has twelve black and one red. Because then D has twice as many black than A. So D has got twelve, A has got six black. And C has two more reds than B, so we've got 10 reds in C and only eight in B. All right. How many red cards is in A? I think seven. And B is eight. C has 10. And this one has one. Boom! Got quite lucky there with my kind of like almost guesstimations, I guess, um, is what I'll put that down to. I wouldn't have expected any less from you. Thanks, I guess. As usual, I will keep my promise. The man handed you a key. Now be on your way. Our time together is quickly running to an end. Really? That's... I know it's sad, but do not, mo do not mourn too soon. I will definitely meet again. Oh, okay then. See you next time. I love the way Lewis's like demeanor has changed. She's gone from like not really understanding what's going on and, and not really wanting to deal with the guy to just accepting it now and like yeah this is just part of my life now let's um let's let's be gone let's get on with it turn the key and the lock opens why do we convict murders why is it so, why is so inherently evil can to why is it so inherently evil to commit a murder it's just english there mike I know it's not your language, but no big problem. You might argue that the act of taking another person's life is reprehensible. In that sense, one could say that it is evil to actively and deliberately shorten someone's life to a significant extent. Just the other day, I was walking back home from school, and just as I crossed the bridge, I noticed the screams of a woman. It sounded quite desperate, and when I peeked over the edge of the bridge, I saw a woman in the deep water, ard arduously trying to stay afloat. I watched her struggle to keep her head above the water, reveling in the fact that both my feet stood on solid ground, whereas hers weren't. In one moment she noticed me, and a glimpse of hope speared across her face. She screamed at me to help her, save her. I grinned, shook my head, and I spit. I enjoyed the small, tiny bit of hope the woman still had, vanished from her face as she realized that her life would end with full certainty. That it would all, that it would all come to an end down there, in the cold river, that everything had been meaningless. Not long after, the woman disappeared below the water's surface one final time, and I felt a tear rolling down my face. It landed in the water, right above where the woman had taken her final breath, and in one more drop of water to the river that had taken her life. I can swim perfectly well. I could have saved that woman, but I chose not to. Does that make me a murderer? Can I be arrested for not helping someone? The next day, news spread around town that the woman had gone missing. Apparently, she'd been a terrible person throughout her whole life. My family discussing the tragedy at the dinner table made it difficult for me to hide my unbridled excitement. In the end, I couldn't fully suppress a brilliant smile. No one noticed. There's no need for tears of alleged comfort when someone is suffering. It only makes matters worse. I don't need your help or compassion. I don't need anybody. Okay. Just randomly on the road. Hardy residence, so. Better get home, it's getting dark. Okay. Let's roll home. What would that chicken be doing there on the side of the road? Don't know, let's find out. Why did the chicken cross the road? How are you doing? Are you hurt? Did a car run into you? Hmm, seems to be that you have no injuries whatsoever. Then what are you doing? Are you just sitting here doing nothing? Did you see something in the woods? Something dangerous? Is this chicken lassie all of a sudden? <laughs> Don't you want to go back to the farm? It's just a few minutes from here by foot. I shouldn't dawdle over this thing any longer. I should head home. That would probably be mad at me that I'm home late, assuming I had just been gallivanting or something and punished me accordingly. I'd better go quickly. Though I guess the damage has already been done. All because you had to trick me into trying to help you. You betrayed my trust. Trust. Such a tragic mistake. 
Oh, wow. Lewis has got a dark side all of a sudden. Did she just eat the chicken? Uh, I really wonder what he meant when he said our time together was running to an end. Maybe this is the last set of puzzles. Might I be free at last after this final ordeal? Well, I better get going, no matter what. Where am I even? Looks like an ordinary room, only a peculiarly shaped one at that. It's nice and cozy in here. All right, so I do believe this is the final area. Mike did say something about we wasn't uh, we wasn't a million miles away from home. This is completely wrong. So, push that down. Yeah, so here's the mistake. I need these, this area here to push them across there. Alright, so I need to do those ones first then. Don't want to push that one though. The top one doesn't matter so much. Once we can get to here, push them to here. Go around, push that to there. The last one's going to come straight down here. Do you know what? Maybe I need to just push, push one to there instead. Because then I can push them down to... Still got a few questions about this one. A minute. I don't think the bottom matters. Always got to come here. At the very least. Hmm. So I was thinking about doing this. Then, because I've already put that block there, I now can't get around. But hold on a minute, if I could just do that, I hadn't pushed that one at the top. Fill these ones up first. It's a given. I'm pretty confident on that.
Well, if I leave them all central in the room, man, this music is building up to something epic. Holy crap. I must say, if I haven't said already, I've, I've, I think the soundtrack to this is really cool, Mike. You did a really good job on this. I think I've probably said it before. Okay, so I can do this, do this. See, with that there, that blocks that into it. Probably should have gone the other side. Right, I'm going to have to call the episode in a minute, but let's try this one last thought process before we do call it. It's clear in the last episode that helped. be a way that I think if I have that in position if that, these similar ones weren't here I could then push that up I know so that's calling the episode but I just keep having these so I, know I am going to call the episode. Make sure you come back in the next episode, guys, where we continue on this puzzle and hopefully put some of our theories into practice and move onwards through this final section of the game. But until then, I've been Nock, you've been awesome. See ya.